thanks to my patrons on Patreon and Curiosity Stream for making this diatribe possible. More on Curiosity Stream's helpful documentary streaming service and a free 30-day trial that's linked below after the video. Hey, Cypher here. I'm regularly asked to give book recommendations, and half the time it's really random subjects. Like, historians aren't just Rolodexes of knowledge, we specialize in things. So today I wanted to do an episode on how historians find good books, because there's a whole process to it, and I get that a lot of people don't really get this in school. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed the most in those requests is people ask me like very general things like what's a good book on American history and it's like that is way way too broad so that's the first step narrow your subject to something reasonable make it a very clear event or theme or something along those lines not just the entirety of some nation's history National histories tend to be pretty bad, and extremely orthodox, so they are really old hat. Typically, historians don't really deal with the orthodoxy anymore. That's a very, like, 1950s kind of history. So if you can narrow your subject to something that's like, instead of the entirety of American history, you're instead interested in, in a, a particular war or something like that, that's a lot more doable. Because like, national histories for instance, they're either textbooks, which nobody wants to read a textbook, they're not fun to read, that's the whole point, they're for a class, like, leave it for that. Or, they're written by people who are not exactly up on current methodologies. In either case, I would never recommend them. And the easiest place to start any kind of inquiry is on Wikipedia. I have a whole diatribe on that too. Um, so if you're interested on, you know, the problems with Wikipedia and how, you know, Wikipedia is actually really good for scholarship, um, be sure to check that out. And oftentimes, you don't really have to go any further than Wikipedia because it will have recommended readings at the very bottom. There you go. Also, if you're trying to research by a theme and you're not really pulling up a lot of stuff with the terms that you're using, try looking at a thesaurus and using synonyms to bring up other subjects. But all of this depends on why you're trying to read up on these subjects. You know, the books that you're looking for are going to change from if you're just doing, you know, quick perusing of a subject to doing like deep research that you're trying to find like the definitive book on this subject to just reading for fun. Now I'm always going to be talking about this stuff like it's for research because, well, I mean, that's what I do. But if you're reading for fun, you know, there's ways of telling if it's fun reading by going to like the New York Times and seeing their review or something along those lines. But for me, I'm always going to be talking about it like you have some sort of library access. That's kind of the assumed minimum. And it's not just research libraries, but like literally any library in the US at least will be able to do some sort of loans or have access to a lot more stuff than you would normally think of. So, go visit your library. Hi, my name is Peter and I'm a public librarian and I cannot agree with Cypher more. If you aren't checking out your local library for resources on how to do research, then I don't know what you're doing with your life. Not only do we have wonderful history books like this, but we also have access to online journals and databases and they're free insofar as you have already paid for them with your local taxes. So. Uh, come on by, check us out, and take advantage of the fact that we librarians have master's degrees and answering questions. All right, back to you. Be sure to check out Stacks and Facts. He's a criminally underappreciated channel. Even though you'd expect library stuff to be boring, Peter makes it pretty interesting. So if you want to learn more about what libraries do, go check out his channel. Anyways, there's also a concern about paywalls, where they section off content. 
Libraries have access to some of that stuff, and oftentimes there's other ways of getting around paywalls, but you've got to do the work. You got to research yourself. You can't just ask somebody to do it. You've got to come up with the answer yourself, and that's the point of this. So the easiest thing to do in terms of finding what is like the definitive book or, you know, how a book fits into the current historiography on a subject or anything along those lines is to find the most recent book on a subject. So for instance, if you're interested in like New Mexico's struggle for becoming a state, then uh, like this would be a good starting point because this book came out in 2012 and um, I don't have the most recent one, which literally came out earlier this year. Um, but when I was first researching it, this was the most um, recent book. And of course, in the introduction, he discusses the recent historiography. So you instantly know what's the most important book in the historiography simply by what they refer to. But you don't just have to go through books. You can find historiographies all over the place. In fact, you can find articles that are purely historiographies. They used to put out books like this, which is literally just a compendium of sources. But the last edition was 1991, so this is pretty out of date. Instead, you can go to things where it's on these like broader subjects like the American West, and then you find something that's called like the Oxford History of or the Blackwell Companion 2, and these are basically big old batches of historiography essays. These things, of course, cover the subject at hand and very broadly, it's kind of the point of these things, but they always include a historiography, which means that you can dig in from there. But there's other resources you can dig into, like literally just searching Amazon for your subject matter is a good way of finding books. There's Google Scholar, which will incorporate a lot of uh, articles and you can find what you need to uh, find there, though oftentimes you'll be stuck behind a paywall or something like that. But with Google Scholar, it will actually tell you, you know, that like this work has been cited elsewhere. And finally, of course, there's Wikipedia, which you don't necessarily have to go by what they recommend as readings. You can also see what they're citing in the footnotes. This is called source mining, that you literally just go to Wikipedia, find all the sources that are listed there, and then figure out which one is the best for you. Basically, you're always just looking for what is the most discussed book. So for instance, if you're talking about Reconstruction, the most discussed book is this, Eric Foner's Reconstruction. Um, but it's a bit of a beast. It's not thin and holy crap is it just laden with information. So maybe you don't want to dig in that deep into Reconstruction. Instead, you can go and find articles. For instance, I was doing a lot of research into Reconstruction recently in terms of how it is related to the American West. And when it comes to what is often called Greater Reconstruction, well, the best person for that is the person who coined the term Greater Reconstruction, which is Elliot West. And his final speech for the Western Historical Association when he was president of it was about the Greater Reconstruction. So that is the best thing for what I was looking for. But I had to go through a number of books and a number of articles before finding exactly what I needed. So really what you're looking for is notoriety. What is discussed the most? What is the most notable? And finally, once you figure out a reading list, but you still want to like narrow it down, you can just look up scholarly reviews. On basically any scholarly book, there will be scholarly reviews, and they come out in the major journals. JSTOR, the big database for all this stuff, actually has most scholarly reviews publicly available online. You can't download it, but you can read it online. And if you have library access, you can download it. In fact, articles have been kind of on the rise as a mode of historical writing. The fact is, it's becoming more and more difficult to get published 
through books. Digital printing has made it a little bit easier for presses, but the fact is, the whole thing of books of monographs have been waning of recent date. So finding good articles is also very important. So I hope this gives you an idea of how to find good books in history. The main points are narrow your subject, make sure that you're trying to find the most notorious book out there through various things such as historiographies in the most recent book or anything like that, and look up reviews of the book so that you know what you're getting into. And hopefully with this, you can find a good history book on your own. Say hello. This is my new cat, King King Richard the <laughs> First. Although right now, I get to call him King Dick. Just sit there. Is it really that hard? Thanks to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. They're a streaming service with hundreds of documentaries, which documentaries are a great way of dipping your toes into a subject before launching into full bore research. For instance, say you wanted to do something on Stalin's time as General Secretary of the Soviet Union, but you can't narrow down the subject enough, you could watch this documentary on Curiosity Stream about the rivalry between Stalin and Trotsky. Stalin. Trotsky. They were worlds apart. Which is really fun, by the way. That way, you can find a question worth digging into. If you click the link below, you'll get 30 days free to check it out. After that, it's only $3 a month, or $20 a year. If the History Channel won't do it anymore, CuriosityStream will. And thanks to them for supporting the channel.